I don't have uh, the energy that I normally would have, so I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna preach today, and uh, I I knew that God when I got afflicted, I knew that somehow the Lord would work this thing out for me some kind of way, or unless I believed that He would for me to be able to preach today. Because when I finished preaching Sunday, He put on my heart what He wanted me to talk about. Uh, today. And what I was trying to figure out is, okay, now, Lord, if you want me to talk about this, this, this coming Sunday, then, okay, well, what do you want me to talk about Thursday night? Well, I found out that I have anything for you to talk about Thursday night. <laughs> Chris is going to talk Thursday night. You just do this. So uh, I, I want to call your attention to First Kings chapter 19. And uh, it's, it's, it's a different kind of message, uh, perhaps, but we will see what the Lord is, Lord is saying. I want to sing a song, but I'm going to save my strength for preaching. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> see, the praise team, they got ready. I said, no song today. Um, we're going to begin reading at the 15th verse. This is right after the tough guy, Elijah, had just come out of a tremendous state of depression. Having defeated the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove, he was now um, on the run from Jezebel, that wicked queen of the northern kingdom who was married to the wicked king Ahab. Jezebel was controlled by an evil false god named Asherah. Jezebel controlled Ahab. And Ahab controlled the northern kingdom. Elijah had defeated the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove. He had run from Jezebel and God restored him. Nothing breaks you out of a, a good state of a depression like being given a job, Amen. given a, an assignment. That's why when you're going through, you need to come to church and get involved. Verse 19, verse 15, and the Lord said unto him, go, giving him an assignment. Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. Go back to the northern kingdom. And when thou comest, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. And Jethu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, some pronounce it Elisha. The name means um, uh, God is salvation. Elisha, the son of Saphath, of Abel Meholah, thou shalt anoint to be prophet in thy room. I want you to anoint this man to be your successor. I want you to anoint this man to be your replacement. I want you to anoint Elisha to reign in thy stead. The prophet Elijah is said live to be a hundred years old and by now he's an old man and coming to the conclusion of his storied ministerial career. And it came to pass that he escaped the sword. It, it shall come to pass that he that escaped the sword of 
Haziel shall Jehu slay. These men that you're going to appoint are going to work in concert together. And him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. But to your concern, Elijah, because I know what vexed you. Let me tell you, you you're not alone. It says in verse 18, yet I have left me 7,000 men in Israel. Oh, I got 7,000 in Israel. That is 7,000 in the northern kingdom. See, all of the northern kingdom's kings were evil, but not all of the northern kingdom's people. I have at least 7,000 in the northern kingdom that have not bowed their knees to Baal. And every mouth, uh, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. I got 7,000, so you're not alone. And, and that's what, that was one of uh, Elijah's uh, weaknesses. He worked alone. And he thought that he was the only person left representing the Lord. Don't let the devil isolate you and make you think you're alone, because you're not alone. Even in what you may be contending with in life, some people have health problems, financial problems, marital problems, different things, you're not alone. A trick of Satan is to get you to believe you're alone. Amen. The Bible says, know that the same trials that are accomplished in your brethren, in you, are accomplished in your brethren in the world. Everybody goes through. Everybody has challenges. That happy person sitting there with a smile on their face, they're not smiling because their life is perfect in every way. And no, I don't believe that they're wearing a mask and that they're pretending. You just understand that in life, everybody has to go through. No, no one is immune. No one is immune. So uh, it says no one is immune, then we all contend. Am I right? And so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Saphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12th. He was out in the field and uh, uh, there were 12 yoke of oxen. Uh, he's working with his slaves in his father's field, farming uh, a field, and uh, uh, he has the last group of oxen, group of two, that he is controlling. They're all out in the field. Are you following me? Yes. And, uh, <coughs> pardon me, and, and, uh, and, and Elijah uh, passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left, he left the oxen, that is, Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I shall go, then I shall follow, I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again. Yeah, go and say goodbye to your father and mother. For what have I done for thee? That is, go kiss them. Go tell them goodbye. I hadn't called you. Go ahead. And he returned back. From him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh and the instruments of the oxen. That is the plow. He took the plow and, 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 and burned it. He took the oxen and sacrificed them. And then he threw a big feast and gave it to the people and everybody ate. Then he rose. And when after Elijah, he left and found Elijah and ministered unto him. 
For your consideration today, I'd like to call your attention to the 20th verse and the last clause. He says to uh, Elijah says to Elisha, go back again. For what have I done to thee? He rebuffed him. He gave him a short answer. He uh, was quite rude uh, in the way he handled this man. Um, he was taciturn. He said very little. He was uh, laconic in dealing with Elisha. He only said as much as he had to say, dealt with him on a need-to-know basis, and then treated him as though everything was classified. He rebuffed him. Called him, then rebuffed him. Called him and then mistreated him. So I want to preach today dealing with life's rebuffs. Amen. Um, still dealing with being in the year of the presser. And there's a lot of things that you have to press through if you're going to be who and what the Lord would have you to be. And among those things is how do you respond when life or someone rebuffs you? How do you act when you've been disrespected? You know, that's one of the big crimes in the black community. He disrespected me. So what'd you do? I shot him. I killed him. Man landed that dead. What, what was his crime? He disrespected me. How do you deal with life's rebuffs? Bless us now, Lord, in Jesus' name. May we preach that which becometh sound doctrine and gospel and do no damage to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Dealing with life's rebuffs or pushing beyond life's rebuffs. Amen. It seems to me that toughness is, a, is once again the theme or the center of what God would have me to talk to you about today. In this year of the presser. Luke 16 and 16, the gospel of the kingdom is preached and men everywhere press into it. We, uh, this year where we are going to be uh, dogged and matter of fact about getting closer to God and being the man or the woman that the Lord would have us to be. And, it, and it's necessary now that you develop this mindset because society is becoming increasingly intolerant. We've never seen society function as it functions today. Uh, even on college campuses and even in uh, the real world, there was a time where you could disagree with a person and we could have discussion and our heart not be challenged. Uh, that, that, that was a time when there was a tolerance for an opposing point of view. All right? If, if I felt one way and you felt another, you could hold, you could have your viewpoint without me marching trying to get you fired. You could have your point of view without someone protesting saying you should no longer be allowed to participate in whatever. Uh, that you could have your point of view and your authenticity, your ethnicity card not be brought into play. Today, if you think a certain kind of way, you must not be a real black man. Today, if you agree to certain things, you must, you must not be a, 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 an official sister. Because if you're a real sister, then you got to believe in abortion. You You've got to believe in same-sex marriage. You, you, oh, you, you, you had to have voted for Hillary. If you're an authentic African-American, you 
have to have a certain point of view, or if you do not, we won't visit your church. We will try to put you out of business. If you happen to play in the NFL or the NBA, we will try to get you fired. We, the, there is no place for you to think a certain way now in society without protests and your, your credibility being called into question. If, if, if a white person disagrees with a black person on any issue today, it's got to be because that white person is racist. It, it can't be that they actually just have a different viewpoint. That can't be. Oh no, it's, it's got to be one reason. You, you are racist. If you disagree, I've talked about this before with the LBGTQ community uh, on any issue. You are a homophobe. All this stuff is designed to silence dissent. It's designed to push you in the corner and make you shut up and be a good puppy and know your place. The only problem is we have a mandate from the Lord. Our mandate from God is to cry aloud. Spare not. Tell the truth. The truth is, today, the, those who cry for tolerance are the most intolerant. Our college students are not being prepared in most universities to deal with the real world because they shout down speakers that they disagree with. When in times past, the belief was the purpose of a university experience was to be exposed to ideas and different things that you had not previously, previously been exposed to and then no, learn how to cope and deal with those ideas. And see, how do you know what you believe until what you believe is challenged? That's right. That's right. I was fighting the flu the last week, but guess what? I had a chance. I, God gave me such a wonderful opportunity. My doorbell rang, and I, I came to the door, and there stood some Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses. You know, they were new. They, they hadn't got the memo. That's, that's, that's Wooden's house. Don't go there because this guy, this guy is sold out for Jesus. And he knows what we teach. So between hacking and coughing, I got a chance to get it in. <sighs> but you know what? I thank the Lord for a land where they have the freedom to ring that doorbell and not get shot and not get cussed out and, and say what they think. And then in the arena of ideas for me then to present my argument without uh, trying to kill, hurt, or maim them. You follow me? So since this trend is, go, is taking place, you got to be strong-minded. You got to be tough. You got to know how to act when you are rebuffed, when you are shunned by certain ones, when you meet them and they're glad to see you until they find out you are a Christian. Then, then here's what happens. Then there is this uh, exercise that takes place to find out what kind of Christian you are. So yes, I'm a Christian. Oh, praise the Lord. Good, great, great, great. Yeah, great, great. Okay, then here's the exercise. And we gotta find out what kind of Christian this person is. Uh, is this a Christian who believes all that stuff in the Bible? Or is this a Christian who really doesn't take the Bible seriously? Who understands that the Bible is not to be taken literally, you know? Uh, that if you're, if you're a literalist when it comes to scripture, something's wrong with you. And I, we, we need to know how does this Christian feel about LBGT and, and about women's rights and, 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 and things like that. So as they march around, you got to know what's going on. And uh, you, can, you, can, you can even shorten it or you can play the game and let it string out. But you ought to let them know. 
I'm washed in the blood. I believe the Bible is the word of God. I believe all human life is sacred. And I believe that holiness is right. Praise the Lord. And I believe that God put, uh, made the woman for the man. But there is not a man without a woman. Say amen. amen. And there are many other things, but I'm throwing this out. Uh, 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 because I want you to be strong. Last Sunday, we, we dealt with this uh, strong prophet. Found out that Elijah was from the land of Gilead. That region mean, means rocky place. There was a tough time in Israel at the time, and God needed a tough man who didn't care whether the news liked him or not, didn't care whether he was popular or not, who had the audacity and the, and the nerve to walk up into King Ahab's court uninvited during the rainy season and say to him with Queen Jezebel sitting there watching, there shall be no dew nor rain until I say differently. And walk out. And he did just that. And God honored his word. And that was a drought for three years and six months. Well, today's message, you know, that was a tough assignment. Today's message is also about this tough man of God. How he is given a task. <clears throat> among other things, to name his successor. He was to appoint two world leaders, two national leaders, and to name his successor. I said to a servant of the Lord, friend of mine, that God have called us to speak to, uh, especially prophets and prophecy, uh, prophetesses, to speak to interpersonal things, creature comforts, physical healings and things like that. But not only that, we're called to speak to national things, political things. Oh yeah. And so God gives the, the man of God a threefold assignment. Name two kings and also appoint your successor. Are you with me? That's, that's, quite, an, that's quite an assignment. We want you to appoint your successor. <laughs> Pick the man who's going to take your place. <laughs> that might be why he was so tough on him. Um, and, and actually it was because he understood uh, that the major purpose uh, for those of us who are saved, beyond us just being chums and pals and buddies and just getting along and, and loving each other, that's a big part, is the mission. Jesus said, when you pray, you know, people get mixed up on, over whose prayer it is. It, well, it's not the Lord's prayer, it's the disciples' prayer. Well, whatever. The Lord taught them to pray this way, so it, it, it came from him. So we, we're not going to get messed up over semantics. But here's, here's what's indisputable. He says, pray this prayer. Thy... Kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. You got to understand that what we're saved for, among the things God saved us for, is for the executing of his will in the earth. We're not just saved to get a new car. We're not simply saved to wear a suit or saved so that we can have a padded bank account. He saved us so that we could be a part of his labor pool. I heard him say, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Said, therefore pray to the God of the harvest that he might send forth laborers 
to work in his harvest. Some of you would be happier in Christ if you weren't so self-centered and so consumed with our own uh, standing. Wouldn't it be something if we were labor-minded? Lord, what can I do for you? Who was it, John Kennedy, that said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Boy, we sure have changed from that. Because now everybody's marching about what they want their country to do for them. Legal and illegal. You ain't got a right to be here. Here illegally, marching. I can't, I can't believe it. Try that in any other country. Then march holding up the flag of the country. You're not marching under the banner of old glory. You're marching under the banner of a country that you say you don't want to be sent back to. You could, you couldn't come up with this stuff. Hollywood couldn't come up with it. <laughs> the truth is, uh, in this case, truth is stranger than fiction. It makes no sense. Not everybody will say it, but it makes no sense. Praise the Lord. And so uh, here we are in, 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 a, in a time where uh, we need people who will speak up. We'll save to be workers for the Lord. Save to promote his ideas. No preacher is called to preach without the Bible. No believer is called to walk away, <coughs> are you with me, from scripture. You'll excuse my, my cough, uh, but I'm doing better than you thought I would be doing it. Uh, somebody wishing I, Lord, I wish it would have, if I'd known he was going to say this kind of stuff, I would have prayed that the flu got his voice. Yeah, but it didn't get me. <laughs> yeah, see, if we were so consumed with ourselves. Oh, when am I going to get married? When am I going to get healed? When I, am I going to get this job? When is this going to happen to me? When is this person going to speak to me? When is, when, what, what? We're saved for his bidding. And you know what? You know what? We are expendable. We're God's foot soldiers. Yeah, that's what you're saved for. Buy into this, my brothers and sisters. This is the key to being happy and complete. Young black man, buy into this. Understand that you're not recruited to reshape God. You're not, you're, you're not saved to come up with your own brand. You're saved to allow the Lord to mold you and make you into the man that he would have you be. My, he's the potter. I feel my help. I am the clay. Mold me and make me Oh Lord, today. Can I get a witness? So, so here, let me, oh, calm down, Wooden. Calm down so you can be feeling good. And my God, the, the, the train is trying to take off. Today's message will show the abruptness of this tough Gilead, Gileadite. How abrupt uh, Elijah was in handling his successor. How Elijah was, as I forementioned, taciturn. That is, he didn't talk much, didn't give instruction, almost refused to. Um, and how, he, we'll see how Elijah just flat out rebuffed him. How he was abrupt and blunt. And uh, 
wouldn't advise the young man. And the reason I want you to get this is life is that way sometimes. Sometimes you just don't see it coming. Things happen. Am I right about that? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask you to touch your neighbor. Too much flu for that. But look at your neighbor. <laughs> look at your neighbor and say, things happen. <laughs> things happen. And, and, and sometimes life can be so unfair. Oh, man. Sometimes the, the timing couldn't be lousier. Oh, my. But you've got to know how to roll with the punches. Mm. How he snubbed him. And not only did he snub Elisha, he checked him. Yes, all of this to test his young successor. Let me drive it home. To test him. Bless you, Sister Crystal Mose. Praying for you. Lost her daddy. To test this young successor to see if he was worthy of the opportunity of a lifetime that was given to him. I'm going to show you that many of us today would not are not ready. Sometimes an opportunity of a lifetime shows up by your being corrected and checked and rebuffed. And if you have too much mouth, if you are passive aggressive in your response to it, if you know how to play your little playback games, you will prove that you're not worthy of the opportunity that just came to you disguised as a leader checking you and rebuffing you and putting you in your place. Oh, what an opportunity. Elisha had no way of knowing that if I pass this test, I will have a career in ministry that would last 50 years. He had no way of knowing that if I pass this test in my lifetime, I will have impact on the nation of Israel, the nation of Judah, on the Moabites, Moab, and Aram, I would be able to affect at least four nations. I would do almost twice as many miracles, recorded miracles, as my predecessor had. Oh my, that I would be used of God, excuse me, to do things uh, like I would, what was, what was in the, what was in the balance that you don't know about is the Jordan River being parted. Spring purified at Jericho. A widow's oil being multiplied. A dead boy being raised to life. Poisons in the stew being purified. A prophet's food multiplied. Naaman's heal, being healed of leprosy. Gehazi becoming a leprous. The axe head floating. The Armenian army being blinded by your anointing. All of these great things and major world religions grabbing hold to you in history. He didn't know that what was in the balance that Jesus would even speak of him. All of this was being offered to him disguised as a rebuff. The only thing that mattered 
You who are so full of yourself. You're the most wonderful person in the world. You don't believe you? Ask it. That's the problem. That's the problem. The only thing that matters is whether or not he could humble himself. That this young hairy man could humble himself and follow the lead. This young bald head man could humble himself and follow the lead of this elderly, this aging hairy prophet whose career was winding down. Can I get a witness? Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, almost, I'm almost done because I, I said I wouldn't be up long. So now, he, let me tell you what happens. It's, it's, a, it's a day. It's a day. You follow me? It's a day. You never know, first of all, you never know when God is discussing you. You never know when God is discussing you and when you've been drafted by the Lord for a task. And most of the time when God drafts you, he doesn't tell you. He didn't tell Job. Job didn't know that God said to Satan, hast thou not considered my servant Job? Job didn't know that. When the devil went to God the Father and sought and obtained permission to uh, sift Peter as wheat, Simon didn't know it. He didn't know till Jesus told him. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has sought and obtained permission to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. Uh, uh, Ananias didn't know. When Saul was praying that God had volunteered Ananias, showed him to Saul in a dream. And then God came to Ananias and said, now I've already showed him you in a dream. You got to go down there and uh, lay hands on him that he would receive his sight. I already showed him you coming, so you got to go do it. God operates like that. Elijah coming out of depression. God said, go anoint the king of Syria. Go anoint the king of Israel. And uh, go find your successor. Um, let's... Uh, he would have fallen prey to the trap, the bias trap that you taught us. See, uh, um, Elijah was a human being. And he probably, on his own, had God not named Elisha, he would have went looking for someone more like himself. Came up the hard way. Came from Rocky Gilead. Uh -huh. Came from the land of these tough guys. Go find someone else that you have more in common with. Right. No, God says, go find a rich kid. Oh, we know he was rich because only wealthy people could afford 12 yoke of oxen. Right. Slaves, right. employees to work the field. Right but he was a, a good young man in that uh, he wasn't somewhere sitting around, but he was working. While he's working, God is volunteering him for a task. And volunteer, uh, uh, Woods called him by name. So now the prophet is standing there one day and he's watching all of the yokes of oxen, two by two, pass. Yeah. As they're all out there working. And all of them pass. He's standing there with his cloak on. <coughs> Excuse me. The most valuable uh, tool that the prophet had was his cloak. Amen. The cloak could be a cape. The cloak could be used as a pillow. The cloak was used to transfer power. 
The cloak. The cloak was used to keep warm the cloak, the cape. So now he, he's standing there. Uh, are you praying for me? Uh, uh, with uh, the cloak. All the others passed by. It's about like David. All those big, strong brothers of his built like Adonis, looked like Greek gods. Samuel said, no, the Lord won't let me anoint any of them. So don't you have someone else that, well, I got a little guy. I got, I got a son. He's ready. He's out in the field. Uh, he's uh, keeping the sheep. Says, go get him. Brought the guy in. Said, he's the one. Anointed him. Well, all these uh, guys pass. Then here comes Elisha. Working. God calls workers. Some of us are too lazy for the work of God. Amen. See, you got, you got to be able to, in doing the Lord's work, you got to be, you got to be just as comfortable dress, working dressed up, or you got to be just as comfortable working dressed down as you are working dressed up. See, when picking up paper is, too, is beneath you, you're not fit. Praise the Lord. If the best you can do when you find something wrong in the bathroom every time is go find someone else and let it clean, let them clean it up. You're not ready yet. And God, God looks for folk who can get their hands dirty. Amen. Look for people who can who can get it done. See, you can't you can't work the altar if can't nobody slobber on you. Amen. You, if you don't want nobody coughing on you, don't want nobody touching you, and don't want nobody snot on you, don't work the altar because people go through. Well, well, my, my, my I paid, I paid a certain amount for this. I don't care what you paid for. If you're going to work the altar, you're going to work the altar. That's just the way it is. Sometimes in casting the devil out of a person, oh my, you, you just got to, you got to put your clothes in the cleaners. That's all. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be something that you were giving birth and the surgeon didn't want to get dirty? So well, I don't want to get anything on me. You saying they're pushing. <laughs> Push. <laughs> that would be bad, wouldn't it? That would be bad. And yet there are folk who, who say we say we love the Lord, but we oh my, just high hill city. Sometimes, sometimes you got to understand that's time to wear flat. To get the work done, this man was working, and as the prophet, as he passed by, Elijah, no, I mean, no good morning, no how you doing, no what's up doc, I mean, nothing, just nothing, just nothing, and throws his cloak on him. And even after that, now they've never met. They don't know each other. There's no indication that they have uh, uh, an established relationship. He walks away. Elisha, being a Jew, uh, a Jew, a Hebrew, figures out what's going on. When he gets his wits about him, he understands that something significant just happened. Saint, don't, don't, saints, don't let significant things happen and you miss it. I mean, we've had, we've had, we've had significant things that take place just right here. Some of you have missed every service. Well, I wasn't able to make it. Well, I wasn't feeling good. Well, I was tired. Something. When, when, that, that, that's, a, that's a different anointing that's released when significant things happen. And that anointing is released on everybody who's in place. You got, to, you got to know when God's up to something. The wrong time to stay home is when God is doing things. When there's a stirring, you ought to be trying to get in the pool. Some of us would still be by the pool of Siloam. Because when the stirring takes place, we still won't move. Amen. This guy, he recognized that something, something, something has happened. So he runs and catches up to the prophet and says, sir, let me go home. 
bid my mom and dad goodbye. Let me have a little ceremony and I'll come and I'll follow you. He's excited. He's willing. He's available. He's filled with glee. There's no resistance. I'm going to do it. I'm on board. I'm in. What does he get for that proper response? He gets rebuffed. I won't, I won't let that sink in. I like the servant that came to the Lord and said, Lord, I've done this, 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 and this. Man standing there expecting the Lord to just compliment him. The Lord looked at him and says, uh, you've only done that which is your duty, you unprofitable servant. Go back and take it up another level. What if, what if dads applied that to their sons? What, what if we demanded more than mediocrity of each other? What if the black community demanded that our boys pull up their pants? Yeah, de demanded. De de what, if, what, if we didn't, what if we didn't overly praise you just for looking like you ought to? Some of us won't praise for everything. Oh, everything, everything, everything. You want, you want every little thing to be highlighted, every box checked, every compliment for every little thing all the time. And, uh, and when you haven't done anything, yeah, you will, hopefully, but you hadn't yet. In many cases, you just arrived. I enjoy talking to my grandson. I said, boy, I just love you. You just got here. Well, Grandpa, I ain't just got here. Well, how long have you been here? I've been here eight years. I said, son to a man who's been here 56 years, you just got here. And then he looks, hmm. <laughs> it's cute when you're his age. All right, let me go on back to this. So, uh, uh, he gets rebuffed. I showed up. They had a meeting at the church. They were looking for people, pastor, to volunteer to help with this, that. And I came, and you know what? They wouldn't hardly even let me in. I, I, I just don't feel like working in the church anymore. You failed the test. The test wasn't theirs. It was yours. Pastor, I, I, you know, I, 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 I put my time in and I wanted to be one of those. That I just wanted you to know that I'm just with you and, and, and see like me and my trying to help. I just got my, my feelings hurt. I'm, I'm discouraged. I, I think I'll just go home. No 50-year career for you. There's nothing in the future for you because you can't take being rebuffed. I just joined the church. And after I just joined, I ain't been here long enough. They hurt my feet. I ain't coming back. You fail. Sometimes. See, sometimes God knows how to test your metal. And some of us prove to have no metal. No matter. Just ma a marshmallow believer. Just push you and it's just, just soft, man. Just soft. Soft, soft. Just soft. Just my pillow. It's just soft. Soft. <laughs> you don't like what I'm saying? He rebuffed him. I'm almost done. I'm preaching too long. But Elisha proves that he's cut from the right cloth. 
that he's made of the right stuff, that he was not the New Testament man who said, let me go home first and bury my father. Very different. Number one, uh, and, uh, the text uh, doesn't even indicate that his father was sick. Number two, the oriental uh, 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 tradition was that uh, it could take a whole long, a long time to get home and wait for your father to eventually die. He could have a condition where you know, he just lingered for six years and, and the Lord had given you an assignment to go preach the gospel. So this guy was trying to get out of something. That wasn't Elisha. Elisha goes home. Having been rebuffed now, he didn't walk away. He wasn't 2018. Who does that man think he is? Oh, you know how you would do. And how you do. <sighs> you know how you do. You know how you, we do each other when we feel like we've been slighted. And I hold in the eyes of God, that's you. That's the real you. See, see. Some of us, when we feel that we've been slighted, we can be so disrespectful and act like that's not what we're doing. You are no Elisha. Kids can pout. Roll your eyes at your parents. Tell your mother or your father, don't enter into my room. What? Is this room? Is this room part of the structure that I'm making a house payment on? Because if it is, all these rooms are mine. That'll preach right there. All rooms are mine. Yeah. Then in, in the church world, in ministry, some of you, you pout. You get funny. You play your game. Oh, you know when you've been disrespectful. And you need to know that when it's being performed, it's recognized. Even though nothing may be said to you, God's writing you off. See, see, see Elisha went home with Clee. And the first thing he did was he got rid of, let me, let me wrap this up rid of his past. He said, because God's given me a new assignment. He took the beast that he was plowing with and turned them into a meal. That means, can't go back to them. Can't have your cake and eat it too. He took the plow and used it as firewood. Now he's disconnected. From his past, because he said, now nah, I've got to do something for the Lord. Saints, there are things that God is telling us to sacrifice. There are oxen and plows and relationships that you got to burn for what the Lord has for you. He's got a 50-year career for you. He's got, he's got a turning uh, poisonous stew, healing uh, people. He's got things that he wants to do with you. But there are some things that you're trying to hold on to that you got to let go of. That you got to let go of so he can do what he wants to do. Anytime you follow God, there, uh, there's risk. And there are no guarantees up front. Because when... Elisha was called. Elijah never said to him, did not say to him, someday you'll get a double portion of my spirit. 
when he was called. Elijah never said when he was called, you will get this and this and this if you serve me. Well, what did Elijah tell him? All he told him was, I ain't got nothing to do with you. You want to go home and bury and say goodbye to your parents? Go ahead. I didn't call you anyway. I didn't call you. God called you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thought you said that God called. So why you quit? Why are you sitting over that bitter now? Why is it? Why are you not serving? I thought you said God called you. Oh, let me just slap you a little while. Why did you? Why let me just knock you around? I thought you said the Lord gave you this assignment. Why did you give up your birthright for a morsel of meat? Almighty, give me strength, Lord, to fight for the call that you put on my life. I'm fighting for this because this is this is my this is what God gave me. I ain't giving it up. If He takes it, fine. But if it's what the Lord, if it's what the Lord has given you, and if you know a missionary, you know, brother preacher, that God called you. All right, He hadn't He hadn't given you a church yet. Well, then you serve where you are. He, he, had, he hadn't called you as a worldwide evangelist yet. All right, well, you just serve with glee where you are. You don't just sit down and quit. Well, you know, I just, I'm just waiting for something better. I'm just waiting for the Lord to send something better. Better ain't coming. Because you have stopped the process. This man goes home. severs that which he's familiar with, walks away from his rich daddy's house, sacrifices his career, burns what he's familiar with, and then leaves and runs and search and he finds this road. Taciturn. Anointed man of God. Isn't it amazing you can be anointed and rude? He was rude to him. He was rude, but he was God's man. He needed, see, he needed, needed to toughen him up. So everybody's whining now. Everybody's protesting. He's a bunch of weaklings. Isn't it amazing? One of the biggest things that we got to be concerned about in society today. I laugh at it. Bullying. And we pretend like, oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. 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 Oh, ain't nothing as bad as being bullied. Everybody. In times past, people knew how to handle the bully. You, you didn't need a, a bullying course. We have an online class uh, de dealing with bullying. We're not offering that. No, no, no. When you get tired of them, knock them out. That's all. I mean, it's simple, 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 simple. You can get rid of a person. You can get rid of a person. You can get rid of a person. She, she talking about, well, I just couldn't make him stop calling me. Yeah. You can get rid of him. In most cases, you, you, can you, know what to, you know what to say if you really want to. I can't get any help in here. So now he goes and uh, finds this man. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I'm, I'm going to put off right hand of fellowship this Sunday. <laughs> Too much coffee to be shaking somebody's hand. Amen. You appreciate that, don't you? Amen. And, and you do me like that when you, you know, when you're going through. Because I caught it from one of y'all. <laughs> I'm having fun with you. <coughs> but after he finds him, chapter 20, Elisha disappears. Chapter 21, Elisha disappears. 
What is he doing? Serving his master. Following Elijah. Learning the ropes. And being a real understudy. Not trying to tell Elijah how to do it. But learning how it's done. Chapter 22. Good God Almighty. No mentioning of Elisha. Mm -hmm. Now we've just left First Kings and now we're in uh, Second Kings chapter one. I'm closing, rocking. <coughs> and Elijah is coming down to the end of his career. Oh Lord, God begins to use him. And then here comes Elisha, chapter two. And it came to pass when the Lord would take Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, still trying to get rid of him, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord have sent me to Bethel. And uh, Elisha said unto him, you can tell he learned, as the Lord liveth and my soul live, I will not leave thee, <laughs> oh Lord. Because he understood that God had given him an assignment. Said, even if you tell me to stay, I'm not gonna stay. So then they went down to Bethel together. And the sons of the prophets that were, the, that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said to him, Knowest thou that thy, the Lord will take away thy master uh, from thy head today? Do you not know that your master is going to be taken? And he said to them, yeah, I know it. And that means I'm going to be elevated. No, he said, yeah, I know it. But you shut up. I don't want to talk about that. Hold your peace. Good God Almighty. Now that's a real student. Thank you, Jesus. He wasn't waiting for his master to die. He understood that his assignment is to go all the way to the end of the road. Oh Lord, I wonder how many today will tell the Lord, I will go to the end of the road. Oh Lord, and Elijah said to him, Elisha, tarry right here. This old man saying here, yeah, for the Lord have taken me, he said he's sending me to Jericho. And I heard Elisha say, no sir, as the Lord live and you, if my soul live, I'm going with you. So they went to Jericho together. If y'all pray with me, I'll take this home now. And the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho said to Elisha, do you know that your servant, your master is gonna be taken today? And he said the same thing to them. I know that time is running out, but hold your peace. And Elijah said to him, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Look at how Elijah is trying to get away from him. I don't see why Elijah have said one time, you've done a good job. I don't see why Elijah has one time given honor to Elisha. I don't see why Elijah has one time said I'm proud of you. No, he's training him to be a mighty man of God. Training him to be a soldier. And when you're being trained, you don't need to be coddled. When you're being trained, you don't need to be patted on the head. You got to learn how to serve without accolades. You got to learn how to serve. Can I get a witness here? When life is hard, why I'm, I'm, I'm out here because I've learned how to serve God. 
through the storm and the rain. Paul said, I've learned how to preach when I'm full. And I've learned how to preach when I'm hungry. He said, I've learned how to preach when I have money in my pocket. And I've learned how to serve God when I'm broke. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Yeah! Yeah! Do I have anybody here who can say, Preacher, I've learned how to serve my Savior through the storm and the rain. Hallelujah! I've learned how to serve him when I had an amen corner. And I've learned how to serve him when I didn't. If you understand what I'm saying, lift up those hands and tell God thank you. Hey, hey, hey. hey now, that's all here. So here, so here, they go down to Jordan, and Elijah takes his mantle, wrap it together, and smoke to Jordan, and the water's divided. Elisha's standing right there. And so, after they do that, then finally, after following him, working for him, serving him. The man kept trying to push him away. Rude when he first met him. All that stuff. Making him. Then he finally does this. He look at him. He looks at him. After all of that. And he finally says, ask what I can do for you. You passed the test. You're ready. Ask me. Well, turn to God bless you. I didn't see you back there. Ask me now. What can I do for you? After all that, ask me. And when the young man was given the opportunity to ask, then he took it. And he said to him, I would like to have a double portion of your spirit. That's what I would like to have. A double portion of your spirit. That is, I would like to get the birthright. I would like to get your anointing. When the monarchs would die, or when the prophets, or in the Old Testament, when a person would die, the double portion was the birthright. If there was two sons, the inheritance would be divided in thirds. The son that had the birthright would get two thirds, and the other son would get one. He'd get, he got the larger portion. That's what this man asked for. And he told him, you've asked a hard thing. Because the truth is, it has never been mine to give you. When Elder Turner sent me up here to stand, not in his stead, because I've never, I was never able to stand in his stead because I was never good enough. Sons can't stand in the stead of the pastor. But I could stand on his behalf. He never said, someday this will be yours. You know why? It was not his to give. It's God's to give. See, you, you, you all, some of you, you ask for that which is not a human's.
to give you. And it vexes your spirit because you can't serve properly because you need too many guarantees. Life is something. You can't, can't guarantee that you ain't going to get sick. Can't guarantee you every time I pray, God's going to raise your mama up. Can't guarantee you every time it's going to work out in your favor. Because sometimes it doesn't. But you still got to serve. I preach too long. Still got to serve. He said, but if you see me, when I go up, if you see me, when I go up, he's old now. He lived to be a hundred. Uh, then something will happen. Verse ten says, and he said, "Thou ask a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee." It shall be unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. That's it. Bishop Blake told me, Bro Wooden, the time you spend in NC Third, the outcome may be that you got you gain some much needed experience that will help you down the road. Or we may elevate you in the future and dismiss me. I'm walking out saying to myself, that's it. <laughs> that's it. The rest is up to God. Now you go and work. And don't be asking any questions. Serve. Put your head down and serve. And what is right? The Lord. When the time is right will decide. I'm done. It says, and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that, notice he's talking to him now, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted, it divided them. The chariot of fire divided them. The first time they've been divided since they've been together. They divided them. And Elijah was caught up in a whirlwind. But check this out. God is good. Look how the Bible is written. They were divided. Elijah was caught up in the fire. But look at the scripture. Verse 12 says, and Elisha saw it. Remember, if you see me when I go up, if you, but you got to see me. Can't hear about it. Amen. You got to be there. And Elisha saw it. And when he saw it, he cried. My father. Let me pull myself together. Here. My father. The chariot of Israel. And the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. That, that don't move you. You, you ain't, you ain't, you, you, you I, I can't say nothing. <sighs> you see, you see the love there. My father. Term of endearment. He loved him. He served him. He learned a lesson. And his father heard him. And threw the cloak back. Same cloak. The years earlier he put around him. Threw it on the ground. And when it was over. The sons of the prophets were standing on the hill watching. The cloak was lying on the ground. Elisha walks up to the cloak. Picks it up. Folds it. Takes it in his hand. And asks. Where is the God of Elijah? And smote the waters. And the waters parted. And the prophets said. 
the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. And all of the prophets went down to Elisha and submitted themselves to his leadership. When life rebuffs you, check yourself. Check your actions. Check that spirit to retaliate. Check the spirit of get evenism. Watch it. For you may succeed at all those things, but you'll cancel your own career. If that's what you want, good. It's like giving your arms before people and telling everybody that pretty dress mother's wearing, I bought that dress. All right, whatever acclaim that I might get from telling that, that's what I'm going to get. But what God was going to give me for just keeping my mouth shut, I've just canceled that. Lord, I want what you have for me. Lord, I want in this year of the pressers, as you have us in preparation, we all get scraped and battered and bruised and various things. Lord, I want to handle it right. If I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar today. I, I'm, I'm quickly running out of gas. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to stand. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that the Lord anoints you right. I want to pray that God touches you. And, and, and this, even though I'm dealing with these two men, it's not just relegated to church work. Employment. Marriage. Life relationships you got to know that things happen you got to know that sometimes the test is yours how you respond to it hallelujah you got to know that it's not only it's not only satan trying to prove you but god's testing you because the lord is saying i got a big anointing for you I've got a big assignment for you. And you need to be tested. You need to be tried to see if you're worthy of this. If you pass the test, when the time is right, God will look at you and say, now, ask me. Ask me. My pastor told me on his deathbed, you know that you are my son, don't you? Nobody had ever said that to me. But I saw him when he went up. And the, the God of Elder Turner doth rest upon me. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you and we ask you to help us. We are on the precipice of something. And the we, Lord, is not just limited to we here in this congregation. But all of us, those who are streaming, those who are watching, those who will see this on delayed basis, those who will hear this message and who will hear it and receive it. Oh God, allow us to walk in the spirit of Elisha. In that even when life rebuffs us, that we quickly recover. Keep that spirit of optimism and joy and that we perform the tasks 
that have been assigned to our hands. That we perform them just as Elisha performed them. And then when, when life comes and tries to tell us to wait here or wait there, to surrender our assignment, to quit our job, to let it go, God give us strength to say, as the Lord lives, and my soul liveth, I will not. I will not let go. We all, Lord, contend with life's rebuffs. May the spirit of Elisha rest upon us all. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Would you clap your hands for Jesus? And would you give God praises?